on today's episode. Is it a power supply? Is it a multifunction meter? No, it's a... Exiloop? Exilop? Well, whatever. It's a dual function device. It falls neatly into the category of a, of a gadget. I suffer from gadgetitis. I wish I'd had one of these little guys when I was starting out in, in electronics. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite novel. It has two main modes as a, a buck boost converter, so it can take an input here either from USB, a standard USB or micro USB, or it has pads here and can take an input voltage of 3.5 to 12 volts, so that you could possibly uh, put some lithium cells on there to to power that. The output is then adjustable from 1.2 volts to 24 volts at around 2 to 3 watts. Now that's not a huge amount of power but it's certainly enough for most uh, Arduino, ESP32, those sorts of, uh, of projects. When it's in its meter mode it will measure volts up to 35 volts, uh, amps to 3 amps, it'll measure watts and uh, from that it can work out milliamp hours it will tell you the time, for example, that a cell has been charging or, or discharging or whatever load you happen to put on there. Let's take a closer look at those features. Now, for those of you who do not like your circuit boards au naturel, somebody has designed a little case for this guy. And uh, as always, links down in the description to where you can find that on Thingiverse. Just before we put it into the case, I pointed out that we've got the USB connectors there. Clearly we have the little potentiometer to adjust the output voltage. We've got a little on off and function switch here and the output terminals. We have a, a common and output minus and output plus. We'll explain how those work as we go through the different modes. That fits quite neatly in there. We'll access to all the important parts. Ah, there's a there's a protective film on the screen. We'll just remove that. Clearly, that just clips together. You could um, glue it if you felt so inclined. But we've got access to all the important bits there. And finally, this is a good idea. Having the the larger dial. This will make it easier to adjust and more precise. The default mode, it's set up as its uh, buck boost converter. Now I get given many different devices to, to fix and, and repair and test. Uh, so this will be useful, for example, if we had something with a, a 9 volt battery in it, rather than using a, a PP3, we can just set this to 9 volts and we're good to go. Just checking that voltage against my meter. In this mode, the output is on the top two terminals, the out, minus, and plus. That's measuring 901. It is possible to calibrate this unit, but that is certainly close enough for my needs. Here's just a quick example of the device powering this little circuit that I um, built a little while ago using one of these LED Wi-Fi controlled modules and we can see it obviously set to 3.3 volts to power this little guy the leds being run off of 12 volts uh, on a different supply and we can see the current there 0.07 amps if we press and hold the on off button we can get it into its uh, wattage mode there it tells us 0.23 watts I found some better data sheets and I'll put a link in the description where you can download a, a PDF of these drawings and it uh, explains all of the things that I've already gone through. What we're going to do next is to switch it into its volt, amp and power meter mode and see how that works. To switch the device into its power meter mode we need to press and hold the on off button for uh, 10 seconds. You will see also another feature after 5 seconds the actual backlight goes out so you can choose to switch that off uh, should you desire. Well, let's hold it for 10 seconds and get it into power meter mode. There we are. 
The other thing to note is that we need to move the cables around. In this mode, the top one is positive voltage, the center one is current, and the bottom one is common. One other thing to note is that there is no reverse polarity protection on this unit, so you must be very careful to get things the right way around, otherwise you're likely to let the magic smoke out. So for example, on this little 9 volt battery, so that's showing 8.4 volts, it's quite flat this battery, and again if we just compare that against our other meter, 8.37, 8.36, so still 0 0.01 in it, which is good enough for me. Now what I'm going to do is to set up another configuration so that we can test the current measurement and in this case the battery capacity test. This is the setup we're going to try. The load voltage in this case is going to be a small lithium ion cell and that's going to be connected to uh, an electronic load and we'll be monitoring the voltage on the top connection there and the current on the centre wire there. This is the electronic load. It's set for a cutoff voltage of 3 volts, a discharge of 300 milliamps. This is a 300 milliampere hour cell, so essentially this is a 1C discharge. By the way, this cell is out of a rather interesting model that I built recently as well. On the subject of useful things, if you've got these little planes with numerous little cells like that, you can join them all together and charge them as one battery using one of these little adapter leads links in the description. Let's get this cell connected and we can see the cell voltage there 4.1 volts. Now when we start our electronic load we see the current indicated 295 milliamps so 300 milliamps in round numbers. This device will obviously also be measuring the, the voltage and the number of milliampere hours. It's cycling through here watt hours, volts, and ampere hours. On the device here, when we press the on off button, that cycles through watts, ampere hours, and the time. It'll be interesting to see how this little cell stacks up over time. We'll come back when the discharge has completed. So the discharge is finished and the results are in. This indicates 288 milliampere hours, 274 milliampere hours. The small difference, I guess, is due to the fact that this was measuring a lower current, so 295 milliamps against 300 milliamps, and also it was measuring a slightly lower voltage. But it, they're in the same general agreement. What I generally tend to do, I don't use these numbers as, as gospel, but it's interesting to compare over time um, what the values are. Despite the abuse that these little cells get in these um, model planes and, and uh, quads, uh, it seems to have stood up quite well, uh, being within its spec of 300 milliampere hours, just down to, to 3 volts. I guess you could probably push it down to 2.8 without any issues. So I'm happy with this little module, power module capabilities and the multifunction meter capabilities for under five euros. I don't think you can beat it.